Some people think it's ridiculous that Donkey Kong Country and Mario Kart have gone six years without new games. People like me think it's ridiculous that games like F-Zero and Custom Robo have gone more than a decade without new games. But Ice Climber? Well, that's gone 30... S uh, let me try again. But Ice Climber? It's gone 36 years without a new game. Wow. Why don't I hear people talking about Ice Climber more often? I mean, when you consider the fact that Nana and Popo have been in half the Smash Brothers games, you'd think that they'd be on the same level of F-Zero and Earthbound in terms of being on Nintendo fans' minds, you know, when considering neglected franchises. But that's just it. It's not really a neglected franchise, because there was only one game. Sure, it's been ported 11 different times, but the graphics on the game itself have remained unaltered since its initial debut in arcades in 1984. Heck, if Nana and Popo weren't included as playable characters in Smash Brothers, would I even care to make this video? I mean, I probably would've, but that's only because Smash Bros. Brawl gave me this downright autistic fascination with Nintendo's entire legacy. The Ice Climbers themselves are pretty appealing design-wise, though I suppose that the original game itself is nothing all that special, unless your only point of comparison is the other first-party Black Box NES games. And, uh... Atari games. And I'm in a hole. How the hell do I get out of here? But the game's simple fun nonetheless, especially with a friend. Just ask the Oni Plays crew. I don't see any icicles. <laughs> I'm sure I don't have to go over it, but the series does start with what it is, so here we go nonetheless. The game gives you control of little Eskimo children who vertically hop from floor to floor, breaking ice, avoiding slash abusing the Arctic wildlife, and collecting vegetables for some reason. By the time they've reached the top of the mountain, they hitch a ride with a giant bird and get to the base of another mountain and repeat 32 times. I mean, guess it makes more sense than Clue Clue Land, I don't know. So that's what it is. But why is it missing? I honestly don't know. When Kid Icarus Uprising was first announced, I'm pretty sure that every Nintendo fan collectively thought, Oh, it's so cool that Pit from Smash Brothers is getting a revival of his own game series after all this time. They should do that with the Ice Climbers too. And why wouldn't we think that? The twins have an appealing design, the polar bear with sunglasses is pretty neat, and Nintendo owns the rights to the IP in-house, so they presumably wouldn't even need legal permission from any weird companies or Japanese dudes to greenlight a new game. If Next Level, or Treasure, or Skip, Retro, really any second-party developer were to ever pitch Nintendo an Ice Climber reboot, I feel like they'd greenlight it, right? Nah, who's to say? Not me, that's for sure. I don't have insider information. I'm a puppet on the internet. Well, regardless of my inability to pinpoint why Nintendo has never even attempted so much as a Game Boy sequel to the arcade slash NES classic, I shall now move on to the next section of this video, wherein I pitch some ideas for how to do a follow-up to Ice Climber. <sighs> Should I do another take? That was very out of breath. I I'm really not a professional. So how should a new Ice Climber game play? Wow. The potential is really stupefying. I mean, when you consider the differences between the first Kid Icarus and Uprising, or the first Mario Brothers and Odyssey, or the first Metroid and Prime, it's practically night and day. That being said, these radically different gameplay styles still work within the context of their respective series because the design philosophy is consistent with the originals. Kid Icarus games always give you control of Pit and you fight monsters and collect sacred treasures to save the day. In mainline Mario games, you always play as Mario and run and jump, get through levels and rescue the princess. In mainline Metroid games, you're always given control of Samus Aran as you traverse atmospheric maze-like levels where you use power-ups and knowledge of landmarks to make your way through them. So then, design-wise, what is at the core of Ice Climber? Well, you've got climbing and, uh, ice. Okay, but seriously, the Ice Climbers themselves have become pretty much inseparable thanks to their depiction in Smash Brothers. So teamwork should definitely take precedent. Vertical ascension should also be at the core of the progression, whether through platforming or some other gameplay style. I had always thought that a Mario and Luigi style RPG from Alpha Dream would be a fitting reintroduction for the Ice Climbers, but that studio filed for bankruptcy, so... Nevertheless, that style of gameplay would suit a sequel well, as could a 3D take on the original's core ideas. I'm a sucker for a good 3D platformer, so I'd be all for that. Plus, we don't really have a lot in the way of co-op-focused 3D platformers. 
A game that progresses like Luigi's Mansion 3 while controlling like Mario Odyssey would be sensational. Though, of course, there's nothing wrong with staying faithful to the first game's 2D platforming roots. It might even be an interesting challenge for some seasoned Nintendo developer to try and make a fun and constantly engaging 2D platformer using only or mostly vertical levels. The possibilities are nigh limitless. And that's what makes me want to see the Ice Climbers return the most. The original game had a total of three distinct characters and three enemy types. You have the Ice Climbers themselves, Nana and Popo. You've got this polar bear with sunglasses that knocks the stage down. You've got this pterodactyl, I mean a condor, apparently. You've got these bird enemies called nitpickers, they hate Star Wars. And lastly, you've got these strange little yeti creatures called tokis. At least, they're strange little yeti creatures here in the West. In Japan, they were just straight up seals. America didn't take kindly to a game where you can literally club baby seals, so they changed the enemy sprites. In terms of story, the original game had literally none. Not even in the game's manual. I guess one could extrapolate that the climbers are twins, and thus siblings, and they're in pursuit of vegetables, presumably to eat, so perhaps the reason why they climb is because they need to bring the food back to a starving village or something. That's a pretty simple but effective motivator for a more fleshed out sequel, and since Nana and Popo also appear to be pretty young, you know, perhaps even children, maybe they're bringing the food back to feed their feeble mother, or grandparents, or, you know, some mature parental figure or figures who are too weak to provide for the family themselves. It's something that lends itself to a lot of different gameplay types and directions. Whether it be as simple as 2D Mario, or as complex as Earthbound, you could really do anything with that kind of setup. Or conversely, the twins aren't children at all, and are fully grown expeditionists, exploring the perilous poles for the thrill of it all. Maybe it could take some cues from Pikmin, whereby collecting vegetables is important, but so is researching and hunting down the strange creatures. I mean, Tokis are already pretty weird, and that bear is freaking iconic. And the condor is pretty cartoony too. I swear it looks more like a pterodactyl. You could come up with all sorts of new kooky enemy types that could really give the game a greater sense of personality. Or maybe you could make it a total adventure fantasy, like Zelda or Mario or something, and maybe there could be all sorts of kooky races that are kind of sentient, like in the Mario RPGs. Or maybe it's more grounded despite its zany designs, with a secretly little sinister tone like Earthbound. That's the beauty of making a sequel to a game that's 36 years old. When you look at Kid Icarus vs. Kid Icarus Uprising, there's so much more personality injected into Uprising, where you can see the roots of Kid Icarus before it, but so much of that just came out of the creative aether. The same sort of thing could be done with Ice Climber, and if you give it to the right team, Nintendo could make it a priority to the point where it might even join the ranks of Splatoon, in terms of being a little more popular and taking precedent for more frequent sequels. The potential here really is boundless. It would take a buttload of creativity, spunk, ambition, and passion for a reinvention of this iconic NES game to come to fruition. And maybe someday the right developers with all those traits will want to make it happen, and Nintendo will let them. But really, who's to say? As I've said before, it's been 36 years since the first game. So it really seems more likely that we'll never get a new game. But, you know, it's not impossible. So what do you think? Should Ice Climber be revived? What style should it adopt? Are there any other neglected video games or video game franchises you'd like to see revived? Leave any and all thoughts in the comments below, and let's discuss! I've also made other videos in this style on series like F-Zero and Codename Steam, so I'll link the playlist in the end card if you're interested. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, like it, share it if you feel so inclined, and subscribe to my channel to support more videos like it. And now, for my Patreon shoutout. If you'd like to support my endeavors, as well as receive special benefits which range from getting credited at the end of my videos, to being immortalized in your very own Talking Sock Sona, then consider supporting my Patreon page for as little as $1 a month, or as much as only $10 a month. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you the next time I see you. Hey Fingy, where have you been?